2016, Will started his own YouTube channel called Will's Wildlife Kingdom with the aim to raise awareness about the need for healthy waterways through programs linked to native aquatic species and their preservation. So recently, in 2016, he also won the Healthy Land and Water Junior Waterway Champion Award. We are absolutely honoured to have him here today, so please give a warm welcome to William Matthews. for that wonderful introduction. Hello all. Our natural environments and our global issues. The barrier reef, global warming, fossil fuels, a whole host of other things are now of wide social significance. Maybe because most of us are urban creatures, our knowledge and opinions come from other sources telling us about places we might rarely see ourselves. But our urban and suburban environments, our green spaces, backyards and creeks, they do not exist in, in isolation. And we are part of that bigger picture. The environment suffers huge changes to accommodate to urban living. Even if we think what was there before was far better, we also have to accept the city built on the river as a global historical fact. And we need to work with what we've got. We are part of that bigger picture, but there are more things going on in our urban ecosystems than you may think. As an urban adventurer and mini documentary maker, many of my YouTube videos are about local species found along our waterways. Very close to Brisbane CBD, there's so much to see, and that's what I want to share. Creeks running through our, war our suburbs are the lifeblood of our wildlife. From the beginning, our gutters are waterways, catching rain channeled through pipes, flowing into creeks, then rivers, out into Morton Bay and, and the salt South Coral Sea beyond. Carried with it are our urban lives, poisons, impurities, sediment, litter and fertilizers. But people are doing things. Here at South Bank, you can see the sustainable water source, the rain bank. It collects local rainwater for use, once filtered and disinfected using UV light. Without this, South Bank would be extremely resource intensive to run. Catchment and Creek Bank restoration by community and government are continuing projects, not only doing the work, but communicating the importance of our waterways to local ecosystems. What I do is in our local creeks, there are native fish species like eel tail, catfish, dungeons of many different varieties, rainbow fish, mullet, and even bull sharks, surviving and sometimes thriving in the face of challenge. Amongst the natives are aquarium fish, introduced species like guppies and sword tails. Through to one has become a favorite, the tilapia, a fish from Africa. This, this can now known as the cane toad of our waterways. Declared noxious under the Fisheries Act, strict rules apply. Usually when we are fishing, we think about bag and size limits, no females, close sea and close seasons. But with tilapia, it's all out war. If you catch one or a hundred, male, female, big, tiny, they must be destroyed immediately and put in a bin or buried. There can be serious fines if you move any part of these fish from where they were caught. They are fast breeding, mouth brooding, and can lay a thousand eggs at a time. The science is that they eat disturbed sediment and will eat, outbreed, and reduce availability of food for local species. What I have seen of the tilapia and caught myself, I believe, as yet, like the cane toad, there is no way to stop them. At least the tilapia is poisonous. Virtually no native species can survive consuming cane toads or their tank. Heelback snakes and sore shell turtles are exceptions. They hardly make a dent in the population. But scientists at the University of Queensland might provide hope. Ironically, with tadpole bait made from the toxins of the toad itself. Vast numbers of tadpoles can be trapped. This would require regular trap activity, and for success, community participation might be needed. Who knows? It could dramatically reduce numbers. 
and replaced the current humane weapon that came to war, inducing cold chromatose in my mum's fridge freezer. Invasive species do damage, but for the most part, we probably need to look at ourselves. Tilapia might disturb sediment, but it is our sedum sediment from, and runoff from our gutters, erosion and soil from building another site which do damage. Sediment smothers aquatic plants and lowers oxygen levels. It can be fatal to flora and fauna and affects water clarity, quality and chemistry from the creek through to the seagrass beds in Morton Bay. But again, he takes steps. Planting to prevent erosion if there could be erosion, like on a building site. Proper use of material and fibre barriers to filter silt. Measuring instruments can test temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, and salinity, but it creates condition can be bred in other ways. Sensitive macro invertebrates like mayfly and caddisfly larva are bioindicators, meaning they are the first to die out in, in time of stress. Dragonfly larva and native fish species can follow. I've seen die-outs happen in my local creeks, maybe by a lack of rain concentrating pollutants, or after rain, carrying poisonous runoff into our waterways, or at worst, through careless disposal of toxic chemicals like paints or acids. Quite often people my mum and dad's age have said, aren't here frogs like I used to? Because our frog species breed and breed in our waterways and breathe through their skins, that, mean, that makes them very sensitive to any changes in our environment. What could be making them more susceptible to diseases like chytrid fungus? Should we think more about whether we use pesticides and fertilizers? What are the long-term effects of runoff from roadways, pharmaceuticals, pass through water treatment, then discharge back into our waterways. What about old buried industrial sites which can leach toxic chemicals? We've recently seen this just upstream of the river, around the bend at West End. Toxic coal tar has leached into the river and its sediment. At least that site was on Queensland's Environmental Protection Register. What about those that aren't? We face challenges with plastic. In the modern age, it's everywhere. Its litter is harmful to waterways, and it seems that's where most of it ends up. Eventually breaking down into microplastics, it can be sent right back to us through our food chain. I'm not keen on eating plastic. When scientists talk about a time in the near future when plastic will outweigh fish, the whole thing seems out of control. It might be the little people as consumers will have to start responding in choices, avoiding plastic. To learn more about waterways, local catchment groups are great. You will see their signs along our creeks. They hold a lot of knowledge from monitoring local creeks and invasive species closely, even conducting counts to get a picture of waterway health. So, Back to where we started. Most of us live in a city and sometimes need a reality check. The urban environment is not as original, not a barrier reef or a glaciated mountain. What, but what we do in our cities has links to global issues. And, and, but just as important is our everyday quality of life and sustainability. I believe the health of our waterways measures our success in managing our environment which, although deliberately modified, deserves your protection. Thank you.